Hey, this is Jewelifish here, and I've got some random alternative facts about the game Enter the Gungeon. If you've gotten to the floor on the second chamber of the Gungeon, known as Gungeon Proper, and have been blessed enough to get to the boss room, then you're probably familiar with the Amaconda, which is a giant snake boss that slithers around the room shooting projectiles from its body and occasionally eats small turrets that heal it from a small amount of HP and increase its movement speed. But did you know that unlike other levels in the Gungeon that have multiple bosses, the Amaconda actually has a higher chance of appearing if you're doing slightly better than normal? For example, if you've gotten a high quality gun or item in the prior floors or the master round from the first floor, then it is proven by Scientific Information Technological Group known as the Red IT that the game intentionally gives you the Amaconda, which is known for being unfairly difficult as a means of balancing out the game and ruining your potentially too good for you run. Another alt fact is around the water barrel that spawns on the first chamber floor of the Gungeon. If you aren't savvy to it already, the water barrel can be knocked over and pushed into the fireplace room to extinguish the flames and activate a secret button hidden within the fireplace. But did you know that you can actually save the water barrel from being broken and still use the water from it to extinguish the flames? For example, you could roll the barrel straight into the fireplace and stop it just before hitting the wall, or you could roll the barrel perfectly horizontally in front of it. Either way, you'll preserve the water barrel and still extinguish the flames. This is relevant because as demonstrated in this authentic and potentially doctored video, you can see that you gain curse whenever the water barrel is broken. This is most likely because the water barrel probably has a spouse and kids back home that they would like to go to after a hard day's work and not be murdered by you for the sake of some silly fireplace button. So destroying the water barrel in this context is just morally dubious and plain bad luck. Speaking of luck, you might previously heard of the companion item in the Gungeon known as Dog. Having the item summons a dog companion which follows the player around and can dig up pickups after clearing a room. It also barks at mimic chests. But most importantly, you can pet the dog. A little unknown surrogate fact about this feature though is that if you pet the dog after it does something good like identifying a mimic or digging up an item for you, the chances of the dog doing something good again in the future of your run increases. This has been proven by computer scientists at the Hard Knocks University who have data mined the source code of Enter the Gungeon and unearthed this code itself that enforces what is known as the FizzBuzz recursive merge sort algorithm in computer science. Another substitute fact about the Enter the Gungeon game is the save mechanic. In case you weren't aware, you can save between floors in ETG by talking and punching a red button. Doing so will make a cryo freeze chamber appear and walking into it exits this game for you, but saves your place in the game. This is all good and well, but did you know that this is a double-edged sword? If you save the game, the rest of your run in the Gungeon will be significantly more difficult and the room layouts will be harder and less likely to give you an A or S tier item. I learned this by watching this video here, and if you're interested in rolling with it, I'll leave a link to the description below. Moving on, you've probably seen this item called the Trusty Lockpick, especially if you're a masochist like me and primarily play as the pilot and enter the Gungeon. You additionally probably have been told that this item gives you a 50% chance to unlock any locked item, such as chests or doors. But did you know that's only part of the story that communists want you to believe? What has been demonstrated by several of my streams of Enter the Gungeon is that if your last lockpick attempt ended in a failed roll and thusly a jammed lock, then you're actually more likely to get a successful lockpick on your subsequent try. And inversely, if your previous attempt ends in a successful lockpick, then your next attempt is disproportionately more likely to end in failure. This is known in statistics as the gambler's principle de la martingale, which in Latin means go big or go home. And I'll leave the Wikipedia establishing this alt fact here for you to read. Had time to read it? Good enough. With that out of the way, let's talk about some misconceptions around the items in ETG. In other games, such as the Zelda series, Kingdom Hearts, Cult of the Lamb, etc., you can destroy objects in rooms and there's usually a chance that said objects will drop money or items of some kind. This, as some have claimed, is not the case in Enter the Gungeon. These misinformed folks will have you believe that you cannot gain any shell casings from destroying items in either the hallways or the rooms or the chambers of the floors. However, did you know that no one has ever proven that you can't get money from destroying those objects? Given that, it's only a logical step to conclude that you need to keep destroying those random objects. Eventually, as my horoscope signs for my fortune cookie has indicated, there are bound to be futures and fortunes from such actions. Also, here's a random proxy fact about trap rooms. You may be familiar with trap rooms already. They're rooms that spawn on floors and typically don't contain any enemies, but instead have environmental hazards like rolling spikes, saws, fires, etc. Additionally, you might be familiar with situations where you can nope out of trying to diverse one of these trap rooms by trying an alternative route and essentially skipping the trap room entirely. 
But did you know that one of the devs in the game have confirmed that if you do this, the game stores metadata across all your runs, which makes it so that more trap rooms spawn in the rest of your future. They called it the Death Taxes and Trap Room Balance feature. While on the topic of room spawns, let's talk about the Old Crest Room. In case you need a recap, if you pick up the Old Crest item from the sewers and take it to the second floor, you can, if you don't take any damage, place it on the Old Crest Altar Room, which opens up access to the secret floor known as the Abbey. Players have long suspected that having the Old Crest makes the Altar Room spawn farther away from the entrance than normal. Well, as it turns out, this is true. Because as community college philosophy major drops out so have extensively documented, reality is simply the illusion that we all agree on. And if we all agree that the Gungeon hates us and purposely spawns the Old Crest Room farther away, then it is so. Reality is an illusion, the universe is a hologram, bye gold, bye! Our next random alt fact is around the bloodied scarf item. As you probably already know, this item makes it so you can teleport across the room and replaces the dodge roll mechanic. It is also because of the difference in controls notoriously hated by console players but loved by PC players. But did you know that a study has concluded that console players have a greater chance of getting the bloodied scarf than PC players? This study was completed by having three different console players and a number of PC players that amounted to 9 27ths of the amount of console players also played the game. This resulted in three times as many bloodied scarf for console players than PC players. The next section of this video is going to be on the most memeable item in the game, the Casey Bat. As you're likely privy to, Casey is a bat that you can use as a weapon to swing at enemies dealing a ton of damage potentially knocking the cadaver of a recent victim into the other enemies. You're also probably privy to the fact that it's very powerful but very difficult to use. But did you know that every time the game spawns a Casey Bat and you don't pick it up, it increases a hidden stat the game calls Weenie Points. It's unclear what these weenie points actually do, but one thing's for certain, it's not cool to be a weenie. My sensors indicate that you are indeed a weenie. Continuing on, the next random fishy fact is around the resourceful rat. You're likely up to speed with already what the resourceful rat does, which is he steals items from the player if those items are left unintended. In place of the item, he leaves the Gungeoneer a note letting them know of his theft and makes fun of them. You're also probably have been in situations where you have full ammo on your guns and get an ammo drop that you can't pick up, so you have left it behind and have been emotionally wounded by the rat. But did you know that it's better in these situations to shoot at least one bullet and then pick up the ammo? This is because, as verified by his interviews with Vox Magazine, the rat gets off to that kind of stuff, and it's better just to cancel him and not support his toxicity. In Enter the Gungeon, there's a shrine called the YV Shrine, which can be activated multiple times and costs 10 money on its first use, and then increases by 10 gel casings for every subsequent use. The effect this gives on the player is that every time their Gungeoneer fires a weapon, there's a chance for it to quickly fire 2-4 to four times the amount of shots with no extra ammo cost and each use of the shrine increases the chance of this to activate by 3.7. But did you know that there's a random statistical possibility that about 66.69% .69 of the population of native indigenous Hopo sapiens mistake this shrine as a reference to Bill Cipher from Gravity Falls, when actually it's a reference to YV from the game Nuclear Throne? Furthermore, this percent of people are legally obligated to turn themselves in for several lashings according to the newly signed IDPD's legislation. Get me good. Whoa, hello. I brought what my is... cat of nine tails. You know, so flagellate me. I'll admit here that I was one of those people and I had to turn myself in. And trust me, it's not as bad as it sounds. I kind of liked it, actually. Lastly, rounding us out with lucky number 13 alternative fact on this video is around the spawning of hearts while playing the robot Gungeoneer. You may already know that the robot Gungeoneer has a unique kit compared to the other Gungeoneers since it's the only character in the game that cannot pick up heart containers and hearts cannot be added to the Gungeoneer by items like Master Rounds or Heart Chests. But did you know when you select the Robot Gungeoneer, the chances of heart pickups or heart-related items increase? This last alt fact was brought to you by the potential sponsor of this video, the National Association of Robot Mains, a nonprofit lobbying group that is totally free of human errors and reasoning and miscalculations. Did you find these validated myths, lies, wives' tales, and fish stories about Enter the Gungeon helpful? Either way, thank you for your time watching this nearly fact-based video. Take care, I appreciate you, and I'll catch you later.